as we uh, start the February turn. Uh, the Germans have another failure coming across here, actually, um, through their operations. Same weather as last time. Uh, economics, nothing too exciting. Strategic warfare, the Soviets chose not to throw their partisans into play. They were actually looking at, well, those things might actually be more useful in combat if I'm starting some offensives here. Uh, Germans couldn't use their paradrop. Oh, I haven't gotten everywhere yet. I may still want to pursue an attack in Denmark. But uh, I can't use my paradrop over here in the Soviet Union because my planes are too far away. they got to be within three hexes to make a drop. And I can't afford to move my planes. They're busy canceling out the Russians one for one, essentially. Uh, I don't think it can actually go any other way. I kind of did. Uh, decided not to even roll this time so let's see uh, the Germans are gonna be at plus two right minus this is what they were they were at plus two with minus four to their hits the Russians are gonna be at minus six minus four for their hits plus another minus two for the poor weather so you'd say well the Germans at minus two well the best they could roll is a six uh, at minus two, that gives them an eight. That gives them a four to one. Hmm. I think they actually had a chance of uh, taking down some of the Russian planes. Let's see if we manage to get some advantages there, because I forget the additional minus two isn't on them. So, I kind of jumped ahead there. Okay, so minus two, that's going to get me to one. That's not going to help, so he's going to have to go twice. Uh, this might work. Minus two gives me four. No, no, it's a minus two, not a plus two. So six minus two is four. Halved is two. Uh, I'm going to be facing a one for the Russians because of the penalties that they suffer. So yeah, none of these airplanes can do anything except cancel out the Russians. Since the Russians can use their air power to modify the die rolls by one each, which is basically what they're doing with their armor, and that's winning them the battles, um, or at least making it less likely, there was no possibility of the attacks. But... <sighs> If I trade off by pushing forward, you know, one of my air units and attacking the Russians at, uh, and leave them one air unit, one air point, then I could have gotten a plus two. Now, if I had done some concentration, if I had been clever, this one, two, three, four, five, this could only defend down to here. So if I had done my airstrike here, maybe moved one of these planes down, um, into that area so that I could do the para drop. that would have actually been uh, probably a wiser move because I'm running out of time here uh, we've got uh, the allies about ready to come in as far as I can tell and I mean we don't know when that which way the die rolls are gonna go but they're coming in pretty soon I really got to get this cleaned up by then anyway let me uh, let me think a little bit about Denmark, and then we'll move on to the Soviet turn. There, I didn't even have to rely on my armor. Uh, I just moved my plane into place, did a paradrop. The armor was the backup plan, uh, because the armor attacking across the strait, I would have been rolling at even. Uh, air unit could have added one to it or whatever, but that's all I would have gotten going in there, and that, that didn't sound very pleasant. So I did a quick paradrop into Copenhagen. 50-50 chance it worked, boom, they're gone. Um, ended up removing the Soviet uh, support in Yugoslavia, throwing another chip in the cup. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to do a lot of sort of dominoes in the diplomatic game, though, here, because uh, I had to play some catch-up over with these guys. I was kind of hoping to drop a control marker into Sweden and be able to start converting things over and getting some games there. Uh, I gotta go invade something else now. <laughs> and Soviet counterattacks down here using these partisans. I'll have to roll for them. Mixed effect, but here they were very successful. Successful destroyed another Italian unit. 
uh, on a single assault actually which is pretty impressive they got a good roll spread and that weakens Italian uh, morale the gap here looks kind of risky but it really isn't that bad what's bad is the amount of units that can come in on this now I can't bring all four in on a single assault but it means that I can get multiple uh, I could do some mobile attacks as well or do two assaults as bonuses but it hasn't so far ground anything down um, I was kind of thinking if I had a surprise attack counter lying around, I might have thrown it down because I, I think I might have been able to do some significant damage to the uh, whole line down there in the south and really driven the Germans back to where they no longer are able to even have a good chance in the near future. Well, let's see how far away those parts are. So, it's going to be three turns. I get the paratroopers back next turn, which is kind of cool. All right, on to uh, rebuilding and stuff. And for the politics phase, I should have pushed this forward and gotten the replacements on the board. I'll just not talk about that. Uh, for the politics phase, did things a little differently. The Germans drew first. They got a political success. Put that here. Now that puts it on the Allies. Hey, did the Western Allies want to toss a political success in so the Russians can get that? Now they want to kill the possibility of a German political success. So they draw, they uh, succeed in getting it and taking the counter out of the cup. So now all that's left is no events. The Russians throw in a political failure, and I believe a no event went in with that. Um, it should. Uh, <laughs> so that the Germans are left with really nothing to draw from the cup. Now, that's kind of an advantage because the Germans can just say, well, screw it, I'm not doing diplomacy anymore. Because they certainly don't want to throw a political success into the cup. Um, that just, you know, in the long run, they want to get Yugoslavia, but that just uh, doesn't help them because it'll be there for other people to draw. Uh, meanwhile, though, the Western Allies will still keep feeding political successes over to uh, the Soviets, see if they can get some kind of advantage or another out of it. Uh, Troop-wise, all the Soviet units, I can push this forward, are actually on the board. I didn't get to spend all my uh, production this turn. First time that's happened where uh, I didn't have any damage to any units or anything. Uh, and the West has always been kind of sitting in that position. Germany, I have a little bit that I didn't get to spend. I've still got this garrison. I rebuilt some of my air power here at Dusseldorf, but I got, you know, points that I can spend on this and points that I can spend on this convoy, neither of which is a high priority. I figured uh, dicking around with the diplomacy is still worthwhile at this point. Certainly, if it means I get Yugoslavia at some point in the game, that's a very positive thing. All right, screwed up with the Germans. I didn't want Yugoslavia. I want Belgium in the game. I want to path through Belgium without having to uh, fight it. It's not terrible to fight, but uh, since I have a positive. So I'll set those suckers up on my border or in their border. And with March comes the end of the, uh, the Russian winter. We ended up with just poor weather. You know, severe might have been fine too. Um, opened up with a quick attack from the Turks. On the off chance that they could take that, I was more careful this turn than I've been, uh, the Turks didn't succeed. But if they had, I wouldn't have to expend any air power. I expended air power off two of my things to cancel out two, and launched uh, an assault with Italians, Hungarians, and some Germans. We ended up getting a very, very good spread on the die roll, um, something that's been lacking and end up taking Kharkov, that, and popping the uh, Russian unit. That's the, well, three of the two national will that I need for that war to be over. That's gonna give me some chance to start repositioning before the Allies can possibly come in. I don't feel terribly ready, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I at least did some strategic movement, took one of my armor, my armor unit from uh, near Denmark into play. I'll be able uh, to maybe reposition some other things as well, the aircraft here. Uh, but I got a lot of troops in Russia. 
I'll go over what happens at this point. I'll come back after I, I handle that because uh, I'm not entirely sure of the uh, steps to the Moscow Treaty, but, you know, I have a vague, broad idea of what it does. So I'll come back after I've taken care of all the mechanisms in place for that. But essentially, uh, the Soviets are going to have to withdraw from all the territory behind this line, which is over here. The Germans are going to have to pull back behind it, which is only a good thing. Uh, give me some additional movement. And uh, then we can start focusing on the next event. And also we'll have an idea of when the Soviets are coming back. To some extent, this sort of happened at the worst of possible times, just before the uh, policy evaluation. That means the Moscow Treaty gets reevaluated in the same sort of way of 50-50 chance, only five turns later. Now, if I had waited until the Allies came in to finish Moscow off, <laughs> or the, the Russians off, uh, I'd get a nine-turn respite. But, of course, then I can't prepare for the Allied advance. Uh, five turns may be enough time for me to take France out at least and then turn against a weakened, or somewhat weakened Russia. Why is it weakened? Well, during this, for one thing, during this period, let's take a look at uh, some of the effects here. Let's see, the first thing we have, um, well, we had this repatriation, where we, of course, had to pull our units back, and they had to go back into our near cities. Since the Russians can't advance into Turkey, my first thought was, oh, maybe I could uh, load up there and try to defeat the Turks while, while you know, the Germans are at peace. Nah, no, no cheap tricks like that. Um, the Russians aren't allowed to move outside their home country, and they're not allowed to do anything in the occupied territory. And the Axis isn't allowed to do anything to the Russians. Uh, the Russians have no will, but that doesn't really matter. The signifier of this conquest is to put this here. Now, this can happen again. Uh, it's going to be very, very unlikely, though, I think, because when the Russians come back, their will is going to be uh, 45. It was never that high, <laughs> uh, I think, in the battle, in, in the beginning. I think they were at 30 at the beginning of this whole thing, so it's going to be a 45 and they've already lost all this territory. So it'll be a hell of a hard time to knock them out. I thought a lot of their reinforcements got moved forward. The only thing that happens is the upgrades, uh, these motorized elites. And that's kind of a pain in the ass. And you can see things have shifted forward. Some of them, they move a year forward. And some of them would have started coming in this turn. Uh, so I rolled for them. They're going to be available, you know, a little early. I think that's intended to work that way, but it's not uh, specified very clearly either way. Germany got some additional national will, 10 points, same as they'll get for France. Uh, they got a bonus ground unit. And when the Moscow Treaty ends, occupied USSR becomes part of the act of USSR. That doesn't mean they conquer it. It means that it's part of their country. They can start adding those factories back here. Right now, their factory count is down to six. Now, they're going to be continuing strategic warfare with the Germans during this. Nothing prevents that. I get a political success. I chose to take that on Sweden here. Um, I don't get a counter in the, in the cup, though, which is kind of sad. I thought I did. Uh, I was kind of counting on that. Now... For the Treaty of Moscow itself, um, the USSR is going to get production only equal to its factory count with no multiplication. So, you know, with all these damaged pieces, with a lot left to rebuild, of course, two of the air units were already at six uh, uh, sorties. So, they're not really benefited by this in any sense. Uh, they didn't take any great penalty for removing them from the board. It's going to cost just as much to rebuild them, but they can't do it right away. Um, they're going to have a, a hard time building up their army in time for that five-turn pass as well. So what we're going to see is 
another war over here and the Russians and the Germans probably won't be terribly prepared for it because the Germans are going to have to move some forces here try to break uh, France in, in the meantime and that may be much much harder than it it should be much harder than it would have been in 40. Um, Soviets can't declare war, we can't attack each other, and Soviets can't do interceptions and such not. Now this is, we already have how it's going to end on a 4 through 6, uh, the markers taken off the turn track and the Soviet Union is back in the game and essentially at war. Whew. Okay. All these units in occupied Russia and in the Soviet Union itself are not allowed to move for the rest of this uh, turn, basically, during the operations phase. So now I can turn my attention towards spending some points over here uh, to set up for the potential attack on the uh, Western Allies. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's going to be rough. Okay, I hit the... Yeah, first of all, I moved some of my Axis forces, all German except for the Belgian here, up to the front to launch that initial attack. I'm not thrilled with that Belgian unit in the front there, but... I don't want to pay to move things. Um, I've got a decent amount of money left, but I still have a lot of repairs. I have the air unit repairs. Uh, I have units to build here. The Italians also moved up to the front. I found I had some cleanup to do with the Western Allies, things that I had ignored over the months. Uh, for example, I had left, uh, well, Somehow I had ended up with an air unit in here in the events box, which should have been in the mobilization box. Uh, or actually, it should have come onto the board, I think, with four steps off or whatever. But there's been plenty of time. So, and I also forgot to recover points off the uh, British air units. So I've recovered uh, the, all the points there. There was plenty of time to do that. I also decided to move the uh, WDF and this garrison forward for an attack on Tobruk. That's going to cost my convoy uh, some supplies, but I've got points to repair those. I'm hoping to try to reduce the Italian national will. It's down to 10 already, uh, you know, and make it so that I've got a good chance. Now, I, I, the Italians have repairs to do as well. They actually shipped their unit here. I don't know how much it matters. Um, but it was the only way they could move it the full distance. Otherwise, they would have had to fly it in two steps. Uh, and by convoying it over there, well, they still have to repair the convoy, but not the, uh, not the air unit. All right, now we're going to head into uh, the replacements and such. Not, um, mainly, I want to make sure that this is all up to snuff. I don't really worry about the convoy. I'm not planning on doing any major naval activity with the Germans. But then I also have these planes back here to upgrade and I have the new units to build. Obviously Italians, etc. also have their points. So we'll figure out where that all is. But this was a little fatiguing to look up the rules and try to change my focus. It's going to take me a little time to shift gears. I won't be jumping in right away. Remember how I started this off saying this was the worst of times for things to fall? Actually, no. Uh, if things didn't fall and the Western Allies came in, the Soviet Union, uh, the uh, end of the appeasement policy gives the Soviet Union like 15 more morale. So, uh, I might never have broken them. <laughs> Therefore, I definitely needed to do it this turn, and it's very good that I did, from the Nazi point of view at least. The decision for the Germans was, is it worth doing any diplomacy? And their answer was no. Uh, all three political successes were in here. There's nothing else in the cup for them to draw. Uh, so instead of throwing a no event in just to make things a little tougher, I upgraded all my air. Um, getting myself in a somewhat better position. The Russians, let's slide some of these forward. Um, they were able, the huge production that they're up to, they were able to build everything back up to full strength that they have, but that everything isn't as much as they had. Uh, they 
you know, the, the air units, they're going to have to rebuild them from scratch. And their production is going to go significantly down. Six, they were up around 28 this time. Six, five, six, uh, they're up to 13 in this upcoming turn. Um, so they're going to have a somewhat harder time, but of course they don't have to maneuver their troops around necessarily. So uh, that's, that's to some advantage. As things stand right now, though, uh, you know, we're pre preparing. See whether or not this happens. If it does, well, we don't have much choice. If it doesn't happen, do the Germans want to um, end the appeasement policy anyway? Or is there something beyond that they can do? One thing that's of interest is now there is a political success in there, so they could end up getting Sweden if they can drag their feet if they can drag their feet about entering the war. Um, they also may have enough points to buy themselves a surprise counter and launch an initial attack against the French. Otherwise, they're in danger because the Allies have a surprise attack, which they could conduct, uh, or they could reserve that for an invasion. Um, so I have to worry a little bit about, you know, defending North Germany from a possible attack. Um, can't think of anything else there that's terribly compelling on this side. Oh, crap. Now, the Western faction, the Western units must end the movement in their own country or a map box unless the policy evaluation marker is on the turn track. That's been their pretty much all game. Mmm. Ah, I know what it is. It was when the East invaded that it got placed in there. So Sal gave me this, hey, you can't have the British units there. But man, they would be there by now. Um, there's going to be some cost to shipping them in. The Germans aren't going to attack this turn, so I'll take care of that because uh, the policy evaluation did not get uh, come into play. And I just can't see doing it with the weather we're looking at. We're looking at um, the severe weather. Now, <sighs> one advantage to an attack right now, actually, is that that keeps the allied air from being able to have much of an effect. So maybe severe is good. <laughs> uh, the disadvantage, of course, is that I have more armor applied to the front and that's permanent armor that actually can bust its way through the allied army if I can get it to good weather so see but there is the problem the allies have four planes out here the Germans and the Italians only have three on the field if I do a strategic move I can shift another plane and I can only get one more um, out of the Soviet areas and, wow, I hope those, are, yeah, uh, out of the Soviet areas and into, uh, into the front here. And then I have kind of a parity of planes. I have the air advantage, which is probably going to work to my edge. I think overall I'm better off waiting for better weather. The problem, of course, there is this starts creeping closer. But I do get the diplomacy uh, edge there. I might be getting lucky and get Sweden into play. I get to... There's not much that I want to rebuild. I can move some of my units around. Uh, get this German infantry maybe off of where it is because it's just standing as a... Uh, garrison as it, as it is. So if I pull that around and put it, uh, you know, somewhere else along the front, that's another unit I don't have to pull out of the Russian front. I'm kind of worried about the amount of units that, uh, that I'm forced, that, that just, you know, the inability to move quickly across the board is going to force me to keep in, in Russia. Ah, so I don't know. 
I don't know if pulling the armor out is a good idea either though. Uh, what is the terrain here? The terrain here is also temperate. See, I'm considering the possibility of an attack in Bulgaria, actually. Because that'll help me shift Yugoslavia into my general direction if I take Bulgaria out. And it also gets me a rail net that runs all the way to Turkey so I can throw some German units down into... Uh, into the front down there. Otherwise, I fear Turkey's going to have trouble against the Allied forces here. I'm not sure. Okay, crappies. Um, the West Invaded event actually happened when I moved into back in the Netherlands. Now, this has a number of effects. One is the French Air Reserves which I think I already pushed into the event shot. Um, the Commonwealth trade marker was supposed to go in six turns in advance. Lend-lease was supposed to come into play six turns in advance. These would take longer if the East Invaded had not already happened. But here's the weird thing. The policy evaluation gets a 13-turn boost from that moment. I don't think I can fix these things. It's just a matter of, you know, not realizing quite what caused the West Invaded. There's a conditional event trigger. I should be aware of these suckers here. Um... Because being, I made an attack or placement there. <sighs> so the situation we're facing should be a little different. The Allies should have more. <laughs> just, even just convincing Belgium to join me would cause this threat to be evaluated. Uh, the Allies should have more in the way of... The Commonwealth trade marker, I'm sure that would be in play at this point. I'm going to play it without this event having taken place and restrict it until when France itself enters the war. Um, even if that involves France invading. The reason is I just cannot fix this degree of oops very easily. It is kind of interesting uh, that if either policy is in effect, and that includes appeasement, the policy evaluation gets pushed further up than from there. I don't know if that's even intended. <laughs> that seems like a weird reaction to say, hey, we're going to move that forward. Does it say if it's not on the map? No. So, my feeling there is that the intention is, if you've already put this sucker on the board, you're not supposed to move it. Just because, ah, uh, hey, Germany's showing their goodwill by invading the Netherlands. Um, so this is going to be a slight bone for the Allies. That's okay. I think Germany needs whatever help they can get at this point. Um, the other thing is, as soon as this ends, U.S. entry is going to be six months later which, you know, gives us about the historical. Now, the weird thing with that, of course, is maybe if you could machinate the uh, policy, the, the two policies ending later, uh, you could delay U.S. entry. But that's okay, because to some extent that's indicating... I, I think the only way you can do that other button than by rolling uh, is by uh, um, not doing much, not invading the East and West, for example. Once you invade one of them, you put that marker a year in advance or whatever, 18, 13 months, 13 months in advance, yeah. Um, so anyway, I've gone through everything, I think up to diplomacy 
and the Germans just pulled a political failure marker. And I'm trying to decide what to do with that. I, oh, I think I did. I decided to pull Sweden off the thing. And I don't know if I continued. Oh, now I'm trying to decide if I want to draw because there's still a political success marker in there. There's no German markers. There's no failure. And I've got the points on both my allied nations to make draws. Certainly, it makes some sense to me. Well, so one thing is the pro-Western marker. That doesn't really help me, uh, except being another step to prevent Spain from coming in against me. Because Spain doesn't have a navy. There's not a whole hell of a lot I can do with Spain unless I reverse the... Uh, the trajectory of this war. I'm not sure how many things are available that are going to trigger. That's why I was looking at West Invaded. I wanted to see if that was going to trigger any uh, any new minor shifts, and I don't see one there. So maybe I do want to draw for this. Uh, and basically I'll get two draws, one with the Western Allies, and then the Soviets can take a draw, and if they succeed, um, there's not much they could do with it. That's their problem. They could trigger Finland, <laughs> which it's going to be pretty hard for the uh, for the Germans to get there anyway. So that's that's not too terrible. Okay, so a lot of setup going on here because the roll finally happened, and the Western Allies are now uh, they've given up the appeasement policy. Because of uh, the time when the appeasement policy is given up, we actually have a July 44 ending. If we waited a little longer, it would be 45. And if you delay a lot, it goes out to 46. So in a sense, I feel like getting the early start off is kind of nice because it uh, ends the game early. Unfortunately for the, for the Axis, though, that means the U.S. entry is uh, accelerated a little bit. Let me see. There are some units beyond the scenario, and I don't know. I can just take them off the board, but uh, that gives you some idea of what would be coming in available if the game goes way long. There's a U.S. surprise attack. Um, and we're going to see things kind of kick off. However, the Germans, I think, are still going to make their declaration of war on Bulgaria. The reason for that is when they succeed in taking France, France they get a diplomatic success marker. Um, so I want to make sure that I have something I can convert. The Diplomacy Cup's going to come out of play very shortly, which means there's not room for a lot of uh, different diplomatic actions. <clears throat> I don't have another chance to get Sweden up there uh, but you know that means I'm never gonna win the uh, the economic warfare fights basically and uh, but the gain of Yugoslavia and its troops seems like a, a worthwhile effort uh, to put into place you can see we've got some forces some French have moved up we had to pay supplies for these guys this is going to be kind of problematic, but the Turks are going to be attacking uh, down there. Um, we got attacks through here. One of the things to note is in the long run, I mean, it's only eight uh, national will for taking France out. Um, but I get an extra production off the Alsace-Lorraine. Uh, one of the things to note is that the French North African countries don't, and, and Vichy and stuff like that, that doesn't get created because the Nazi-Soviet pact is no longer in existence. Um, I'm not sure quite what the thinking is as to why the two are necessarily related. I can't make that connection in my own mind. Uh, but it does give you a different possibility, which is that the Germans are really going to take over all of France in this. It's got both positives and negatives, I guess, uh, in terms of there's going to be less, this territory is going to be free for the grabbing, but that's not necessarily a positive. The Vichy uh, stuff, at least, 
provide some sort of possible resistance to Allied forces. Otherwise, uh, that's a lot of coastline in North Africa to hold if that all falls uh, to the Italians <laughs> and the Turks. Um, however, the Vichy stuff also provides some uh, resistance towards taking, say, Iraq and, uh, and down to Kuwait, which has some strategic implications, of course. And towards being able to really put the thumb screws on Egypt. I don't know how likely that is. Uh, given how far along in the war we are, a North African campaign seems like a drain in resources that I might not be able to afford at this point. Eh, we'll see. And we got a couple of declarations of war. I guess there's a declaration of war between the Western Allies and Germany. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if that has to actually happen. The two fa the appeasement's gone. Um, formally one side or the other wants it here. I don't know which, but <laughs> one of them is going to do it. Maybe both. Uh, but there is also a declaration of war on Bulgaria. And that, because of the Moscow Treaty, ends up finally over in the uh, western side of things. Now, if appeasement was still in effect and the Moscow Treaty, it would go up for random. And that could, uh, that basically, if it goes pro-Soviet, it means you can attack it freely, essentially. If it goes pro-allied, well, it means unless you've gotten rid of appeasement by declaring war on the faction, I guess. I don't think there's any need to declare war here, actually. I think the appeasement ending is sufficient to do that. Uh, anyway, by getting rid of, uh, without the appeasement, Bulgaria goes purely Western. And uh, I decided to set up this way, because I can give this up for two points. Um, this is providing something of a speed bump, but if it gets destroyed, then the three points that it takes for Bulgaria to fall will happen without the capital falling. So I'm not quite sure that's the wisest move, but uh, otherwise, if I defend this, it strikes me as fairly easy to get the three national will needed by just taking Varna, and I could ignore the capital there as well. So I'm just not sure. This may be the best move. Put the stronger unit up front, make it less likely to get destroyed. If it retreats, it has the ability to retreat into Sofia. And there's no real easy way to slip around there because zones of control are going to prevent anyone from getting there. So I kind of like this the best. But I can still gang up on a unit, try to destroy the unit instead of, uh, instead of taking the space. So. It's not going to be a trivial fight, though, for Bulgaria. And I may actually hold off attacking Bulgaria, make sure I get my successful attacks here in France. Uh, it's bad enough, in my view, that I have an armor committed down here. Um, but I can throw another one into France. i just got to worry about the Russians coming in, though. That's potentially not that long from now. Midway through the Axis era campaign over France. It takes a, there's a decent amount of die rolling when you're doing a, an initial invasion, especially because the air units are all healthy. So the Italians were able to knock this down with a little help from the Germans, uh, but the Germans already had some extra damage on them, and the Brits uh, actually have a plus one for their air units, and another plus two in Britain itself. I probably should have stored both of them in Britain. Just provide support, you know, one, two, three, four, five, down to here. It's not too dangerous to worry about the Maginot line, I guess. That's a lot harder to crack through, especially if all I've got is garrison units facing it. Um, but, yeah, it's beginning to look to me like the Germans probably want to call off this air duel and conduct it right over the lines where they might actually get um, some modifiers in their favor. Otherwise, what's going to happen is 
they're gonna um, they're gonna end up pretty much handing a few free modifiers right to the Allies. Now the Allies used their Ultra Marker here. For some reason, I had it over in the Soviet box uh, and forgot about it for strategic warfare. But I think I'm happier using it tactically. Uh, serves as just a plus one tactically, but the strategic warfare is not as immediate a concern as saving France right now. Um, and I kind of have advantages in the strategic warfare anyway. Um, don't think my naval evacuation is going to help me on that, though. Oh, well. So, yeah, the Germans might have to... This guy got knocked out of place. Um just bite the bullet and try attacking without air superiority because it doesn't look like they're going to get it. I'm an idiot. The Brits can't provide air support to the French. I've already resolved some of it. I'm not going to go back and fix that, but man, again, you know, I mean, it would be easy enough. I just clear up all the damage done and take back this assault that I'm providing will allow for a slight amount of cooperation at the beginning of the war and then it'll disintegrate because this actually really kind of bugs me that uh, there is no cooperation there um, I, ever <laughs> it's always got to be the same nationality and I know there are cases where support was provided uh, across national boundaries. The German advance was fairly impressive anyhow. Uh, knocked out a pile of French units here, including some of those upgraded elites, both of them. Their will is down to 26. That doesn't seem very low. I mean, this is something that's going to collapse by taking Paris, but uh, I'm also dropping their factory count. I'm reducing their ability to really uh, continue on the war. So I'm hoping that I can mostly knock France out by the time the Russians come in, uh, taking most of this year to do it. Uh, the Italians didn't do much. The Turks actually are helping out. They managed to get a hex here at Aleppo using, uh, I think, some ground support, but I'm not sure. I got one kicking around. The invasion of Bulgaria, mm, mixed thing. First of all, there's four points of uh, Bulgarian will, which means, no, nah, I can't just knock this out in a unit. Um, so I centered on trying to drive the Bulgarians back. Uh, they couldn't retreat from here the way I set it up, but I allowed this unit then to retreat, which is going to be easier to attack because this guy can actually upgrade. So I have some production available. So there's a lot of tricky thinking going on in there. Um, there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do with the BEF, but it can perform some offensive functioning, and it has air support, which is something nobody else has <laughs> anymore. Uh, the Germans obviously used up their air power uh, in that major assault. Uh, and yeah, I screwed something up, but you know, it probably doesn't matter too much. And now I guess we go to the Western Allied turn. This is going to involve a lot of thinking because I've got things like the potential of an attack on Tobruk that I set up here and, and stuff along those lines that's going to make this... Uh, oh, you can see I removed the Diplomacy Cup stuff. That's out of play now. It's just over here. Um, that is going to confuse uh, the overall situation. Plus... You know, so many options. I've got air and naval power. So an invasion of Portugal, eventually. I want this because that's going to bring Spain into the game. Yeah, weird stuff like that. <laughs> um, and the question is, well, how soon do I want that? Because conceivably, if the Germans are aware of what's going to happen here, instead of just fixating on this, let's get Yugoslavia into the war, uh, they may want to finish, uh, they may want to use their finishing of France to prevent Spain from coming in instead. And that's, uh, that's an interesting 
concept because then, well, if I have Bulgaria and I have Yugoslavia aligned with me, maybe then I have to keep going into Greece in order to uh, finish off and get Yugoslavia finally on my side. <laughs> Western allies actually got incredibly successful attacks here, at least the Brits did. Uh, taking Tobruk and into Libya, um, they've got that, uh, the garrison in there now. So they don't have to pay supply for this guy. They're going to have to pay uh, for this, and they've got to pay for these couple of units here. I've got the French here because the French are going to need supply from their own unit, whereas the British unit collects it um, <coughs> from back there. I, I don't want to take make the units be low supply. There's a uh, there's a combat penalty to that that I don't want to include. Um, over here, concentration. The BEF slammed forward. Pulled this plane back for the further defensive advantage, um, since I can only support the BEF anyway. Uh, I might want to. I wish I could get there, but I think I have to ship myself there uh, with one of these units. So I'll keep my air support for now. That might be useful at knocking out German air power at least. Uh, but in the long run, I'm going to want to get at least air, one air unit over into Norway for the strategic warfare effects. Um, the Russians don't really have anything they want to do. What was really impressive was the retreats here on the uh, motorized and uh, armored units. Those were very unlikely to happen. And by setting them up, I'm able to maintain the Maginot line. I don't really want to give it up if I can help it. I could have put a more, def a more dense defense for the French here. Um, Paris isn't everything though. It's big, it's four points, but there's a lot of French willpower, so I can survive losing Paris. And I can go with this kind of weaker line, let the Germans punch through a little bit more, and then I'll get my reinforcement pieces here. Uh, and that'll help a, a little bit, I hope. All right, on to the more economic stuff, and we don't have to worry about diplomacy anymore. Well, I'd say it's a very good thing that we don't have to pay... Uh, for diplomacy or there's no opportunity to pay for it because pretty much uh, the repairs for the Allies especially but for the Germans as well in order to catch up on the East Front uh, for the Russians all pretty much ate up all their economic power um, there had been some holdoffs on the last turn in terms of purchases because of uh, the diplomacy and I wouldn't want to be in the position where uh, I'm really having to choose, ah, oh, geez, do I go for the diplomacy, do I go for the troops? It's hard to tell which is worth more. There were definitely times where that, where that kind of decision-making had to be made. And, uh, you know, where the offensives were cut back for that. I've started putting the uh, sorties on top of the units as suggested. At least when I'm right in there fighting here, it's pretty necessary. I'm not sure it's as necessary here. I kind of don't like it because they look uglier to me than looking at the pretty unit counters, but uh, you have to do what you have to do, I guess. Okay, I think I'm just about done with the Axis movement, maybe completely done. See, they've pretty much pummeled their way through France. Now, the Maginot Line's still there. I tried, like, hell to try to take a hex of it. In fact, actually, uh, launched an attack on this hex as well using support from these garrisons. Uh, neither of those worked very well. The Italians made some headway against the French here. They could perhaps rebuild them. The problem with the French is their factory count is way down. They'll have points this turn to rebuild that unit. But in the near future, they're hurting for points. And in fact, they lost uh, one of their air units. One of them is down here now. And they're really kind of just struggling and hanging on. And unlike the uh, dissolution that happens for Vichy, where you have a low morale France willing to accept an easy surrender, here they're fighting to the last man and you're going to occupy all of France, essentially. 
Uh, Turks made a little headway down here. This yellow, this yellow stuff is not desert, which is rough terrain. Actually, it's over here. Only this stuff down, uh, and it's essentially the same as any other kind of rough. It's just for graphical reasons. Uh, well, they they want to represent it uh, so that you see it a little better. Um, Bulgaria did fall. I gotta do my supplies. Started thinking about them because I'm sending this German unit down to help on the Syrian border. The problem there is I'm going to need naval supply there. Now, I seem to remember, and this would be really terrible if it was the case, so I'm assuming it's not because I can't find it now. Uh, that, maybe I'm thinking the air attack. That only um, your own convoys can supply you. Well, if that were the case... The Africa Corps would have been screwed, right? So, uh, maybe now I'm expecting not to find it and can't because of that. Uh, but maybe it's just not there and I remembered it. Uh, perhaps instead of the air support being your own airplanes. I don't know. It's really hard to remember everything in a game. I don't even bother trying. But... Yeah, we got the Belgians kind of at the limit of their, uh, at their range. They're going to have to stay. No, they can't go any further than they have. They helped. Uh, we had the Dunkirk happen. The little chit used to evacuate the BEF. It stood around and took as much damage as it could. So you can't complain too much about that. Uh, I don't think I have any actual naval supply I have to undertake. Oh, yeah, I do. I have this one. And here's the problem. The English can intercept that, so I'm going to have to throw a couple of these, and maybe we'll see a naval action here. I think I'm allowed to intercept within two. Hey, I got no boats at Malta. Now nah, I won't be able to intercept it because I have no boats nearby. So I will not throw any support uh, for the fleet, just the convoy is going to pay. Because money, production, whatever, is really at a premium at this point. I should probably get these guys... Oh, no, these guys are doing fine holding there. Um, I don't think the Allies can easily just grab Benghazi because that's going to create a new restriction on them that they're going to have to supply. Now, if I fell back to Benghazi, that would be great. Because then I'd be in supply, I wouldn't have to pay for this. But I kind of think the hex is useful. If they end up skirting around me, what do I do? Yeah, that's a good question. Alright. We'll spend that supply point to retreat. Back to Benghazi. And then we'll be in supply there. Phew. Uh, Turks are in good shape. Yeah, I'm still debating like hell about this Yugoslav because if I try to bring Yugoslavia into that into the war, that brings all kind of incentive for Spain entering the war on the Allied side. Of course, the German army can fight in Spain, uh, but in order to bring Spain into the war, I have to start invading things. And what do I invade? It doesn't have to be Portugal. Uh, that would be required if I wanted to place the marker there to begin with. But what else am I going to invade that's going to give me, you know, that's going to be easy? Greece. Um, but that'll get, that would give me a second front up here or a third front or something, <laughs> which uh, is of some interest there. All right. Um, I don't see much hope for the French here, actually. Uh, it's just a matter of waiting it out. You know, the Allies make a little bit of headway here, uh, pushing their way through Benghazi, at least in the uh, Libya territory. i got to make a decision here, a couple of decisions. One is whether or not to throw the French into there. That, that one I think I've already made not to do. But the other decision is whether or not to try to push some Axis forces in to uh, make up for this disaster happening in Libya or count on being able to push through here with the Turks and maybe um, 
at least the German infantry here. I don't know if I want to commit armor. Armor's potent as hell though, and might be able to take Egypt before I can shift my focus back with the uh, WDF there. But here's the problem. There's no rail cutting across here, so I can't just strategic move stuff through Turkey. I have to get it there, and that's why I need to, I guess, yes, uh, supply, build an actual supply uh, port by putting a convoy down there in, in that range. And that's the kind of port that, you know, this med fleet might well be able to disrupt. Remember, the Brits have better shipping than the... Uh, than the Axis does. They have better better quality naval combat. So we're looking at a plus two here and no such bonus over on the Italian side. So chances are I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna be able to keep a good supply route through anywhere in range here. So hmm, this might be something of a, uh, a shimmera there to try to fight the war down there now without any shipping over on this side it's very easy for the Italians to push through but again I could challenge I have a fleet here and another uh, force H here now that's an aircraft carrier and they have more complicated rules and I'm kind of afraid of them uh, <laughs> I think they require the surprise uh, result to be able to launch an attack. So that's uh, uh, there's a major expense to trying to use that. But regular uh, naval units I could use. And then uh, uh, over in France, though, things are so hopeless. You see a lot of French units built, but they're all at half strength. Nothing I can do about that. I upgraded this one. This, under this fort, is at reduced strength. I have some air power, but that's going to get knocked out really quickly. And you're going to see the Germans being able to dominate the area with air power. The thought of, you know, maybe trying to put the BEF back in, it just doesn't seem worth it. It seems like I can better save it for other things, especially now that the naval evac is gone, although, uh, you know, I mean, there's a big risk if, if England's down to only a little bit in that, um, well, it's not like there's a hell of a German Navy. All we have is the, the uh, surface action here, and we need to support that and get a successful trace, but it would be potentially a possibility and that uh, that could cause some problems I'd have to look at the British surrender rules they don't really surrender but they do have a collapse rule and that would be a valuable thing to do I don't know how much it's worth though again 20 points for the surprise attack shit and it doesn't come about right away so I don't see that as happening too soon um, I think France is going to fall before the Russians are going to drop their hammer. But the Russians are kind of scary here. Uh, they've, they've definitely got some significant power. And we got the U.S. coming in not too long from now. So, you know, we should be looking at kind of the Europa situation here where there's not going to be, uh, there's not going to be a lot of time for the Germans to kind of try to regroup and position themselves so that they have uh, a good a really good defense against the Russians there